Before we begin, I'd just like to say that this video is totally not a parody of Slip Phantom's Unicum Guides for World of Tanks, and that they totally did not inspire me to do this video. You also should totally not check out his channel, because he makes totally awful videos. Let's begin. The 2012 Nissan GTR is the number one car to buy, if you are a quote unquote JDM car YouTuber, especially if you make Forza and racing game related content, and have a fan base with an average age of 9 to 12, and your YouTube channel name is, I am 12 gaming. However, if you do not fill any of these criteria, fear not, because you can still drive around in the GTR, just because you think it's a cool car. Because it is. It has a bit of a bad reputation, because it has the same fan base as cars like the Aventador, which little kids love. However, if you refuse to drive a car, just because of the people who like it, you shouldn't call yourself a real car guy. Stop being so insecure, you train wreck. Before I tell you anything about the car itself in game, keep in mind that all of this can also be applied to the 2017 Nissan GTR. The only difference between the two is that the 2017 version has a bit more power, but also has 16 more PI, while the 2012 version can get a wide body kit. But if you actually put this monstrosity on, don't forget. No, you will never be even 1% of a race car. No, wider bolt on fenders won't magically increase your handling. No, having a big wang on the back of your car won't give you even half of the downforce as a GT3 car. And no, nobody cares about your Instagram page featuring pictures of your wide body GTR in a parking lot at sunset. Yes, you're a tuna fax street car. Yes, your fenders make you look obese. Yes, that wing is just for show. And yes, you should have just gotten it tuned at Nismo instead. Got all of that, nice. Let's continue. The GTR is a great car for S1 road racing that is both quick, easy to drive, and good looking. When it comes to its overall performance, it's like the Skylines, but better. The GTR is heavier than the R32, R33, and R34, and doesn't have as much power, but that doesn't mean it's underpowered. It has enough power to go fast without spinning the wheels, which is good, because wheel spin and tire smoke is all show and no go. Because it's quite heavy, it sticks to the road so much better than all the other skylines, that I bet even a monkey could drive this thing. It's so unbelievably grippy, seriously. Also, because of its weight, you'll be quite hard to ram out of the road, or at least you should be, because ramming in Forza works in mysterious ways. To teach you how to drive this car, we have brought here our studio's professional racing driver. Some say, he spent the last two weeks doing nothing but drinking milk. All we know, is he is. Sands from Undertale. Let's watch. The GTR is extremely grippy due to its weight and the fact that it is all-wheel drive. However, heavy and all-wheel drive do not go well. If you know anything about cars, you'll know that this is a recipe for understeer, which is exactly what you'll be fighting against when you drive this car. As you're approaching a corner, brake. High speed corners especially will make your car understeer a lot, or even fly off the track. Downshift as you're braking, and whatever you do, don't turn too suddenly while you're on the brakes, or else your car will slide. Point your car towards the apex of the corner, this is where you'll start to notice all of the weight of the car, as it will most likely understeer towards it. Once you're past the apex, step on the throttle. Because you're all wheel drive, you can get on the power earlier than rear wheel drive cars, but don't get too greedy, or else you'll find yourself sliding away from the corner towards the wall along with all the retards who don't use their brakes. Your biggest weakness are high speed corners, as you'll more often than not find yourself losing grip and sliding towards the outside. To prevent this, don't get greedy with your speed, and remember to brake or lift the throttle. Even if it's just a little, it helps. If you're already sliding, don't slam on the brakes, as that will make it worse. Instead, lift the throttle, and tap the brakes frequently as you correct your trajectory. Now that you've mastered all of this, it's time to move on to the car itself. Thank you for showing us how to drive, Sands from Undertale. The GTR has a pretty high starting PI, which means we won't be able to get many parts. Start by getting race tires. 
you could use the stock ones, since they classify as sports tires, but they slide too much at higher speeds, causing you to understeer more. Because you're all wheel drive, make them as thick as you can all around. And lastly, upgrade the track width on both the back and the front of the car. Next up, for drivetrain, get race transmission and differential. We won't have to worry about a driveline, because there is none. Thank God. Get race brakes, suspension, and anti-roll bars. Roll cage is not necessary, and for the love of God, get race weight reduction you fat fuck. Now for the engine parts. You don't have a lot of PI left to play around with, but luckily, the GTR's engine is not underwhelming at all, so you don't need many upgrades to make it good. Get race camshafts, to allow your engine to rev higher, and stay in the power for longer, and next up, get a sport exhaust, since that's all you can get. Although you're at 900 PI, we are not done here. Check if you can get a flywheel. Luckily, we can get a sport flywheel, and that's it. Now that you're done covering your car any modules for the epic reddit upvotes, it's time to tune it to further degeneracy. For gearing, adjust your final drive towards acceleration until your top speed is roughly 200 miles per hour, or 320 kilometers per hour. You could go faster, but you don't need to. Having that acceleration as you come out of the corner is better. For alignment, get negative 1.7 camber in the rear, followed by 0.12 out at the front and 0.12 out at the back. For springs, lower your ride height about 4 ticks on each end. Get 90% braking force pressure, so that your brakes don't lock up, and that's it. If you feel like it, you can fiddle around with the differential, but for me, it's fine as it is. Now that your super epic JDM supercar is ready, go get some podium finishes. And remember to subscribe to I am 12 gaming for epic family friendly racing game engine swap stands tandem drifting content. Goodbye and thank you for watching.